I used you as an example. Okay, 5-3, polynomial functions. Here's what I need you to know. You already know this, okay? You don't know you do, but you do. So, we're going to go back. I, like, put what I'm going to do right here. There's, like, some space. Or you might want a whole new sheet of paper to add to this. I don't know. You do whatever you want. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about end behavior today. Okay? We're going to have even, that's not even, even degree functions, and we're going to have odd degree functions. Okay? Today, all we're talking about is end behavior. All right? I want you to know you already know it. When you're ready, show me what y equals x squared looks like. What's y equal x squared look like? Yeah, something like that, right? You get that? Okay. Today we're going to use our arms, though, because it's not going to be like that easy. So y equals x squared has both ends going up. Touchdown, right? What's y equals negative x squared look like? Like that, right? So that's true for any even degree function. The ends are going to either both go up or they're going to both go down. When do they both go up? How did I know that that went up? Because what? Because of the coefficient, the leaning coefficient, the positive, right? So leaning coefficient is positive. They both go up. The x squared is what let me know it was a u, if that's what you said. So the positive LC means they both go up. If it's a negative LC, leaning coefficient, they both go down. So that's true for x squared. You already knew that. You've known that for, like, the whole year so far, right? Or... You pretend you do. So it's also true for x to the 10. It's also true for x to the 132. Those all have the same end behavior. Okay? So if it is a positive leading coefficient, I put a box here because I don't know what the middle of it does today, but I know that the ends both go up. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Any even degree function x to the 2, x to the 102, x to the 54, all look like this. Again, I don't know what happens inside of it, but I know that the ends both go the same direction. They both go up. If I have a negative leading coefficient, they both go down. So negative x squared, negative x to the 100 is going to look like that on the ends. I don't know about the box. I'll fill in the box later. Does that make sense? Okay. Now we're going to do odd degree. You got a positive and you got a negative. Right? Let's go back to algebra 1. Show me on your arm what y equals x plus 2 looks like. It either looks like this or it looks like this. Which one? Hold up your arm. y equals x plus 2. Is that a positive slope or a negative slope? Positive slope. What's positive slope look like? This one. Do you guys get that? Positive leading coefficient, or in that case of positive slope, looks like this, right? So that means the right side's going to go up and the left side's going to go down, just like the line we just said. It looks like a positive leading coefficient. Do you guys get that? Okay, if not, it's easy to memorize, all right? For negative, it's going to do the exact opposite. Odd opposite, odd opposite, odd opposite. Okay? If it's an odd degree function, they're going to go in opposite directions. Again, I don't know about the box, but I know about the ends. Are you okay? Okay. Stand up. You're going to do a little math dance for me. Mm, I don't dance. Too bad. Stand up. I can't stand up. I'm sorry. I'll dance with you when my back's better. Okay? Everybody up when you're ready. All right. Show me in your arms. So we're going to use arms from now on, right? What does y equals x to the 4 plus 72 look like? I'll say it again. y equals x to the 4 plus 72. Your first question is odd or even. Your next question is positive or negative LC. So x to the 4 is even, right? And they're positive LC. So like this. Everybody see me? Both arms up, right? 
What does y equals negative x to the 75 minus x to the second plus 5 plus 0 0.2? Like, you don't care about the rest of it. Do you see what I'm saying? So I said negative x to the 75. Odd or even? Odd. Odd, opposite, odd, opposite. So you're either looking like this or you're looking like this. I said negative. I have to go backwards. So what did I do? I can't do it. Like that. Are you good? Okay. So you can sit down. So you get it. All right, good. I'm not good at doing that backwards yet. Okay, that is the only new thing we're talking about today. That is it. Everything else is stuff that you already know, but longer. Okay? So that's it. Is anybody confused by that? Are you sure? Okay, great. So let's go back to the notes to talk about what everything says. A polynomial in one variable is literally a polynomial in one variable. If you have more than one variable, now when I say one variable, I'm, I mean like y equals doesn't count, okay? This is a polynomial in one variable, all right? If it's not in one variable, then it's not a polynomial in one variable. Standard form is descending order. We've talked about that the whole chapter. It's got to be in descending order, right? Uh, leading coefficient is the coefficient of the first term if it's in descending order, right? It's the one in the front. Uh, polynomial function, f of x is really yeah. y. Uh, so this, power function, means there's an exponent in there somewhere. The top three, you should already know. I'm not telling you anything new, okay? This is a constant function. It's like y equals negative 3 or something like that. That's something we should already know. There's no variable. There's no x to the anything, so the degree is 0. It's called a constant function. This is like y equals 7 or something, okay? Linear function is called linear because it makes a line okay see the line the degree is 1 because it's like y equals x plus 2 or something like that right so the degree is x to the 1 so 1 not new right this is called a quadratic not new okay degree is 2 because it's x squared blah 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 so the degree is 2 that should be like yeah I understand what she just said we've been working with it for forever all right the, the next three not so much this is called cubic because it's x cubed. That's cubic, right? We don't know about the squiggles inside. We don't know that today, okay? But I know the ends. If this degree is 3, the ends are going to go same or opposite. Opposite because it was odd, right? Odd, opposite, odd, opposite. We can figure out if that was a negative or a positive LC. Which one would it be? Positive, right? That's a positive LC. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, quartic, quarter, 4. X to the 4. Degree would be 4. Uh, even, right? So both go up. So would that be a positive or negative LC? Positive. Quintic, 5. Uh, odd opposite goes like that. So positive or negative LC? Positive. Are you kind of okay? I don't think we've done anything too crazy today, right? The general shape shows the maximum number of times a graph crosses the x-axis. The domain of a polynomial function is all real numbers. We just did n behavior. This is a super fancy way that you'll get into in pre-calc of writing it. For now, what we're doing is okay. Um, even degree function we just talked about. Odd we just talked about. Number of zeros is the number of times the graph crosses the x-axis. The number of possible real zeros is the degree of the function. So remember when we had y equals x squared, blah, blah, blah. How many answers were we allowed to have? Two? No more than two, right? Sometimes we had zero real, sometimes we had one real, sometimes we had two real. You never got three. It doesn't work that way. So whatever the degree of the function is, is the maximum number of real zeros you can have. We'll get into that later, okay? All right. State the degree and leading coefficient of each polynomial in one variable. If it's not in one variable, explain why. Number 13. Is it in one variable? No, because of that. That's two variables, isn't it? Okay. So not in one variable. Everybody okay? 15. Is it in one variable? Yes. What is the degree of this function? 6. 
Therefore, what's the leading coefficient technically, even though it may not be in the front? Negative 12. Very good. If we were proper and wrote this in descending order, the negative 12 would be in the front, right? You don't have to actually write it down if this is what the question is asking. If you understand that negative 12 is the LC, that's fine. Do you guys get that? Okay. Letter X is not even a polynomial at all. Why? Variable in the denominator, no negative exponents or whatever you want to call it, right? That's the same thing as what I just said. Anybody confused? This is not new. You sure? Okay, great. Let's um, do 23 last. It's something you already know, but if we have time, I'll show you a different method if you want me to. Okay, so we'll do that last. Let's go ahead and go to the new stuff. Let's go to the graphs, okay? So we're on 35 right now. I want you to describe the end behavior, say if it's odd or even, and say the number of real zeros. So really what I do, I first say, is this going to be odd or even? This is going to be an even degree. Why? Um, nope. No? Why do I know it's even? Because they both go the same direction. If they both, both of the ends go the same direction, they both go up here, it's even. If they went opposite, it would be odd, right? So now, is it a positive or a negative LC? Positive LC, why? Because they went up, right? How many times does it cross the X axis? <coughs> Bless you. How many times does it cross the X axis? Four. 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 Okay. So four real zeros. So what that means is, um, what they say, real zeros. Oh, zero is where it crosses the x-axis. So we have four real ones. There might be more than that, but we don't know that just by looking. Okay? Not necessarily. We'll get more into that later. The degree is at least four, but it could be higher. We could have had some imaginary answers that we can't see on a graph. Okay? It couldn't be like two, though, because that's too many. Okay? 37, you have a pencil with an eraser. I want you to try it on your own. Odd or even, positive or negative LC, number of real zeros. Try it on your own. What direction are the ends going in? opposite, therefore this is odd, odd degree, okay? Would it be a positive or a negative LC? Positive. How many real zeros? One. Anybody confused? That's the only new thing today. Everything else is old. Are you okay? Okay. The next one. Um, let's do X next. Okay. Find 6 times C of 3A for C of X is 2X squared minus 4X plus 3. That says, ignore the 6 for a second. Okay. Instead of an X, what do they want me to put in? C. Uh, no, C is saying go to your C function. So instead of X, they want me to put in the 3A. Do you see that that's what they want? It's saying C function, instead of an X, you're going to put three A's in. So 2X squared minus 4X plus 3, and I replace those with 3A. But there was a 6 in front of it, so when we're done, we'll multiply everything by a 6. So that's 6 times C of 3A where C of X is 2X squared minus 4X plus 3. So instead of all the X's, you put 3 A's in. Do you see that? Okay. Order of operations says PEMDAS, right? Grouping symbols come first. These are grouping symbols. We have to start in here. We cannot distribute the 6 first. That's not how it works. Okay. So once you're inside the grouping symbols, you do PEMDAS again. So exponents, then multiplication, division, da, 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 right? So the 6 is still here. What is 3A squared? 9a squared. 
minus 12a plus 3. Is everybody okay? All right, I'm going to go up here because I'm out of room. So 6 times um, 18a squared minus 12a plus 3. And now what? Distribute the 6. So take a minute, use a calculator if you have to, and see what you're going to get. All right, what do you get? 108a squared. You could do the rest. Minus 72a plus 18. That is our final answer. Are you okay? Not terrible. We've done it before. Okay? So now we're going to do the bottom one. Anyone still need that? Jake, are you confused? You're good? Okay. Okay, for this one, I need you to tell yourself. I need to hear you say it. I can foil. I can substitute. I want more people. You don't say that. I want more people, like Corey. I can combine like terms. Okay, that's all we're going to do. All right? So, this one says negative 7 times d of a cubed. That means this right here is dealing with this function, the d function. They're saying instead of all the x's, we're going to plug in a cubes. Do you understand that? And then we'll deal with that part later. I like to break it down and make it look as simple as I can. So I'm going to do the left side of the question now, and I'll do the right side in a second. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So whenever I do that, I like to go ahead and write down 4x squared. Oops, that's a minus sign. Start over. 4 x squared minus 6x plus 8. That helps me keep everything on track. That's less confusing for me. So all those x's are going to be replaced with... Pardon the interruption, but at this time we need um, any band members whose last name begins A through H to resort to the band room to pick up their butter break. Thank you. I would... I would wait for a minute. I mean, you can go if you want to, but you're going to have to watch this then. You do whatever you want. I don't care. Don't get in trouble. All right. All these parentheses are going to be what? A, a cubes. And when I'm done, times negative 7. Does everybody understand that's what we're going to do? Okay. I'm going to make you try this one, and let's see what you get. So remember, don't distribute the negative 7 yet. You cannot do that yet. You have to do grouping symbols first. Okay. but I'm afraid you're going to get confused. Okay. Okay. So what is A cubed squared? Power to a power you multiply, right? So it's 4 A to the... 6 minus 6a cubed plus 8, and then we distribute that negative 7. So what do we get? Negative 28a to the 6 plus 42a cubed minus 56. This is the answer to that. Is everybody okay? Not terrible. You're okay, right? So now... We're going to do this one, okay? That says go to your C function, which is right here. Replace all your x's with a to the 4 plus 1's. And when you're done, multiply by 6. Does that make sense to you? Okay? I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to do it down here, and I'll shove them together at the end. So x cubed minus 2x, and we said a to the 4 plus 1's. And when we're done, times a positive 6. Is everybody okay with what I did first? You substitute, right? You cannot, don't work ahead of me, that's not going to go well. There's no shortcut to this. It's a to the 4 plus 1 three times. 
If there was a shortcut, don't you think I would tell you? I would. There's not. There's no shortcut to that. Okay? If you want to understand why that shortcut doesn't work, let me know later. I'll show you with numbers. Okay? But it, it doesn't work. It's not an option. Hey. Thank you. Write everything I'm writing. Yep. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and FOIL this. Okay? So here's where Algebra 2 really starts leaving some people behind. If you don't understand the shortcuts and the tips and the tricks that I've told you all year, because you kind of didn't have to yet, this is going to take you a lot longer than people who do understand it. It's still doable. You can take your time and FOIL that if you want to. But the trick is, this is the exact same thing twice. So the shortcut is... The first thing squared, or times itself, what's a to the 4 squared? a to the 8. And it's going to be the last thing squared, so 1. And it's going to be times each other times 2. a to the 4 times 1 is a to the 4, times 2 is 2, a to the 4. That's the shortcut. If you're never going to know shortcuts, that's your choice, that's fine, but... It's kind of nice, right? You could have taken your time and foiled, and you'd end up where I am. It just would have taken you an extra minute. But when the problem itself is already taking us five, do you want to take another? You know what I mean? So it's nice if you know shortcuts is what I'm saying. If that's something you need more help with, you can see me and when. I will show you again, okay? So I just wrote everything else down. I haven't done any math. Now what do we do? Foil again, basically. So again... Some of you guys really like this part in front. I'm going to show you you don't have to do that, but you totally can. I don't care. I'm just trying to do it as fast as I can. So, a to the 8 times a to the 4 is our first FOIL part. And we get a to the 12 plus a to the 8. You guys see that? Okay. So now we've got 2a to the 4 times a to the 4 is 2a to the 8 plus 2a to the 4, and then a to the 4 plus 1. I still wrote down the minus 2a to the 4 minus 2. Here's where you really have to like tell yourself, I can do this. I don't like it, but I can do this, right? What do you think we do next? Combine like terms. Combine like terms. Excellent. There's only an a to the 12, so that's done, right? I have 8 of the 8 and 2 8 of the 8. Here's again where you say, I don't care how confused I've been, I can catch up now. I may have not understood the five steps above it, but everybody in here can tell me what 8 of the 8 plus 2 8 of the 8 is. What is it? 3 8 of the 8. Do you see what I'm saying? So in Algebra 2, that's going to happen a lot. I'm going to lose you a little bit. You still have to catch up where you can. And then when I'm done, that's where you can ask me, hey, would you do that or, or come in and win or, or whatever, okay? So don't just, like, quit halfway in the problem because half of it you know. Okay, so that's 3a to the 8. I cross them off so I don't accidentally use them again. 2a to the 4, a to the 4, negative 2a to the 4 gives me positive a to the 4 because those two cancel, right? And then 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Now what do I do? Distribute the 6. You don't need my help with that either, right? 6a to the 12 plus 18a to the 8 plus 6a to the 4, minus 6. Is everybody okay? That's the answer to the right side of the problem. <laughs> Forgot about it, didn't you? So we have to take our two squiggles and add them together. Okay? So I'm going to write it as one big problem because that's kind of a lot of stuff. Um, we had negative 28a to the 6 as our first squiggle, plus 42a cubed, um, minus 56. And then it said plus what we got. So plus 6a to the 12, plus 18a to the 8, plus 6a to the 4, minus 6. So now what do we do? Combine like terms again. Typically, you need to write it in descending order, okay? So the first one I see is 6a to the 12, gone. What would come next? Uh-huh. Plus 18a to the 8. Minus 28a to the 6. 6a to the 4. 
plus 42a cubed. And the only thing we were able to combine was the constants. What's negative 56 and negative 6? Negative 62. That is your final. I'm done. Drop the pencil answer. Huh? Yeah. So I'm going to say it again. I want to hear you say it. I can foil. I can combine like terms. And we just substituted. You can substitute, right? That's what we did. Algebra 2 is like Algebra 1 on steroids. This is the same concept you've known for forever. It was just really long, right? So the idea is easy, but it's really easy to screw it up, too. I know that, okay? All right, so let's go back up to the top. So I'm going to erase what I had here. I always like to try to end on something easy if I can. Okay. Um, what do I hear? What's that? Oh, okay. Um, this says, find P of negative 6 and P of 3 for each function. This is like question 1, question 2. Okay, how do I find P of negative 6? Plug it in. Substitute. Everybody do that. Use a calculator. Let's see what you get. Careful with negatives. What'd you get? If you got 1,227, awesome. That is not new. If you did not, you're going to ask me a question, or I'm going to show you another option. If you did, plug in 3. See what you get. What do you get for that one? 66. So, the reason that's in this section, even though you already totally know what you're doing, is because there's another option on how to solve these, or excuse me, evaluate them, whatever you want to call it. What we just did is totally fine. In Algebra 2 and higher, these problems are going to get bigger, and it's not super fun to plug it in like this. So if you give me like two seconds, I'm going to show you a different method. You don't have to use it, but I need to show it to you. Are you okay with that? Okay. Some of you might like it. Some of you, it might confuse you with synthetic division, and I don't want to do that. So synthetic division, you have to know, this is called synthetic substitution. You don't have to do it in Algebra 2, but eventually you might want to. I don't know. So I'm going to show you how to do it. It's actually really easy, but again, I just don't want you to get confused, okay? The idea is the same as what we did yesterday. Uh, this is called synthetic substitution. You could just watch me if you want, and I'll do the second one. You do whatever you want. What you do is you don't have to solve it because it's already solved. This literally is x. Do you see what I'm saying? Yesterday, we had x plus 6, so we knew negative 6 went in the box because we wanted x alone. Do you understand that? This is p of x. So what goes in the box? Negative 6. Do you see the difference? Okay. So negative 6 goes in the box. Everything else is the same rule. What goes behind it? 1, 0, there's a hole, right, x cubed. Then negative 2, 0, very good, 3. Everything else is the same as yesterday, okay? Drop the first number, it's a 1, multiply by the box, negative 6. Add, what do I get? Negative 6, multiply, positive 36, right? Add, 34, get out your calculator. <laughs> 34 times negative 6, I feel like you need help with. Negative, what is it? 204, yeah. Add, negative 204. Multiply, uh, positive. <laughs> 
So we get what? 1,227. When you use synthetic substitution, your answer is the remainder. I wanted to show it to you as an option. If you know you're never going to use it, I'm okay with that, but I just wanted to let you know it's a choice. Do you guys want me to show you if we were to plug 3 in instead, or are you fine? You're fine? Okay. Okay. Okay.